What's up guys, this is a bit of a uh, impromptu video I guess, this is a video response because I felt like a YouTube comment wouldn't work properly and it's music related so I'm putting it on my music channel but it's not really canon in my channel if that makes any sense. Basically I'm watching this video by Joey Natto who is a music producer who reacts to a lot of uh, other songs, I think he mostly reacts to K-pop but he's also been reacting to some PewDiePie stuff, namely the original bitch lasagna and now the Dylan Locke remix, I think that is the first time I have have sweared in a YouTube video. I've s sweared? Would you say I have sweared or I have sworn? I think sweared because cussed. How about that? Cussed. So it has like a really happy, like glorious type of vibe to it. The hook isn't that way, but the build up here definitely has a type of vibe to it. It's an interesting kind of chord progression that he chose here. It almost sounds like it's changing keys, but I don't think it is. Right, so we're talking about this build up here and uh, it's it's quite interesting, right? It has this chord progression that's quite interesting um, and it has a very different feel from the hook. Uh, and so the hook and the build up do have the same chord progression. And he said they have different feelings, but he didn't say they have different chord progressions. And, and good because they don't have different chord progressions they are the same um, but it's a very interesting chord progression um, and it's interesting enough that when you when you make the instrumentation different it can almost sound like a new chord progression um, and, and that means that like you could probably easily mistake them for having different chord progressions but they are the same um, and it's interesting it goes like this it starts with a G flat then it goes down to an F minor then it goes up to a B flat major and then E flat major and then F major and those last two are twice as fast. So it goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, like that, okay? And so what's fantastic is that he says the word glorious, and that's the perfect word, because you know what? If you're a subscriber to this channel, you're probably gonna be just as excited as I am. It has space chords, all right? You know how much I love space chords. Space chords are fantastic, and this progression has them, implicitly. It's pretty cool. Anyway, the point is, right, that um, G flat and B flat are space chords relative to one another, right? Space chords are in pairs. They're not like an individual chord cannot be a space chord. It's a pair of chords that are space chords with respect to one another. Um, and it can go either way with any pair of space chords. But this is an example of some space chords. And if you want to know more about them, then you can watch my video. It's got a pretty good like ratio, so you should enjoy it. Um, but these are space chords. But what's actually more significant than the fact that the G flat and the B flat are space chords, because they don't happen next to each other. There's that F minor in between. But that F minor is actually really interesting. So let's talk about it for a second, and this will wrap back around to space chords. So when you play this chord, right, that's a G flat. At the beginning of the song, we have the same progression. The intro has this same progression. Um, and so when you play that at first, it sounds like it's a... You know, you're playing G flat, so it sounds like you're in G flat, okay? But then immediately after that, you get this chord. Oh, you get this F minor, and that tells you you're not actually in G flat major, because F minor does not exist uh, in G flat major as a diatonic chord. And so now, what your mind has shifted to is D flat major, okay? D flat major is kind of the default, right? Um, and it could be B minor, you don't really know, um, and, and your instinct actually might be that, it, that it's going to be, uh, sorry, not B minor, but B flat minor. Um, and so what's what's really interesting is that because you kind of go to D flat major slash B flat minor, the next chord being B flat, B flat major, which has a D in it, not a D flat, which is what you would have uh, if you were doing B flat minor or D, D flat major, obviously, um, it subverts your expectations and you get this interesting sound and it's a brighter sound, right? It's higher because it's it, it was going to be a D flat, but then it it went up, right? So it was going to be, and then it went, right? So it's like, it's higher than you expected, and that makes it sound like it's extra airy and extra glorious, right? And so that's like, that's one way of interpreting it, but another way is fantastic, where you say, look, these tell you that you're in D flat. By the way, the reason why they tell you you're in D flat is because when you've played these two chords, you've actually already played six unique chords. There's only, or sorry, six unique notes. There's only seven unique notes in in a key, or I, I should really technically seven unique pitch classes, but whatever, right? Seven unique notes in a key, right? And so you've already played six of them, so there's only one left. There's only one option left, and so the options that you have 
are either an E flat or an E as that seventh note. And if it was an E flat, then what you're getting is some sort of like harmonic scale uh, where it has a minor third as one of the intervals, and that's not very usual. Uh, like, like that's something that is a sound that most people would recognize. It's not totally foreign, but um, it's not very common. Not nearly as common as if, as if it was an E flat. That seventh note being an E flat, which would put you in the key signature of D flat major or B flat minor. So that's why it sounds like that because that's the more familiar thing, and you're going to default to the most familiar thing. Uh, as far as like your perception of the music is concerned and it's all subconscious for for most people um, I mean like even even like I know the theory behind it But that doesn't mean that my perception wasn't identical to anybody else listening to it Like I I'm analyzing it after the fact but like when I'm listening to this exactly the same thing is happening So it happens to everybody exactly the same way uh, so basically what this implies is is D flat major and what that means is that when you hear that B flat B flat is a space chord relative to D flat. And what's amazing is that D flat never gets played, right? Ne D flat never gets played in this entire song, believe it or not, which is quite interesting. Um, B flat minor does get played, not during the main progression, but during the drop, because the, the drop progression is just G flat major, F minor, B flat minor, and then E flat minor. So it's got all these minor chords in it and the one major chord, so. I mean, there you go, right? That's the that's the progression in the in the drop, and then the final chord of the song is an F. So the final chord of the song, uh, so the final chord of the song, you, you go. And then, and then the song, the song is faded out at that point. That sounded kind of dinky, but the song fades out, so it sounds good. But anyway. Um, what that what that what that F major does is it kind of tells you oh you're actually gonna like basically it points you towards B flat minor because F F major is the is the uh, it has dominant function meaning it it points you towards the the, the B flat um, and it's it's like the major five of the B flat chord um, and so like it's not diatonic to B flat minor uh, but it'll give you a lot of gravity. Um, and so basically the, the F major points you back towards B flat minor. So by the end of the song, you are pointed back towards B flat minor, but you don't actually hit it as the last chord. Anyway, the point is this chord progression is not in a specific diatonic key the whole way through. It changes. It changes. And you could think of it basically as going from B flat minor to B flat major. So it starts with these two chords, which are the diatonic six and five in B flat minor, and then it goes to B flat major, subverts your expectations, and then in B flat major, it does the four and five. And um, so it's basically sounding like it's in B flat the whole time, but it changes between B flat major and minor, and that's kind of why it sounds like it changes key, uh, but it doesn't actually change key relative to the other chord progressions because the other chord progressions were actually the same. Now, when it does this, during the drop, um, I mean, that's basically. I mean, that's that's pretty much just E flat minor, uh, and so what you've done there is you've you've uh, modulated basically by fourth or fifth, depending on which direction you go, a fifth down or a fourth up is basically what you've done there, um, and you could also think of it as as going to G flat major actually, but you know whatever you want to do. Uh, and, the, and then the F major at the end points you back towards B flat. So anyway, there's a little bit of a harmonic analysis uh, of that. And uh, I, I was going to write a comment, but I just it just wasn't working as a comment. So I decided to make this little video instead. Um, I feel like this is actually a pretty long video, but uh, not a lot of editing going on. So anyway, hopefully that was informative or entertaining to some degree. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I'll link the video in the description, the Joey Nato video, and why not do the original and why not? Why not link? Every, let's just link everybody. Let's link Dylan Locke too, and, and uh, why not? Because Dylan Locke, Dylan Locke's the one who who made this, and it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. I like it. Um, okay, yeah, cool. See ya.